Hi and welcome to section 4 introduction to time series modeling in R. In this section in video 1 we'll take a look at basic features of time series data such as trend, seasonality and cycles. In the second video we'll see how we can decompose a time series data into various components. In video 3 we'll take a look at stationarity and autocorrelation specifically we'll study the autocorrelation function in video 4 we'll go a little deeper into autocorrelation functions and take a look at partial autocorrelation functions and see how we can perform it in r in video 5 we'll take a uh, we'll study the time series modeling in r specifically moving averages uh, of order 1 moving averages of uh, and generalize the moving average process and see how we can simulate in r in video 6 We'll uh, study the autoregressive process of order 1 and we'll generalize the same. We'll see how we can simulate an AR process in R. And finally, in video 7, we'll integrate the moving average process and an uh, autoregressive process into uh, something called as an ARIMA process. And we'll, uh, we'll study the ARIMA process and we'll actually use a real uh, data set and generate a model uh, to fit our time series. Uh, we'll also see how we can use an auto arima function which automatically uh, picks the best the most appropriate model for you in r hi and welcome to the video on basic features of time series data in r in this video we'll see what is time series data introduce the concept of trend seasonality and cyclical patterns in time series data create a time series object in r so what is time series data in time series data, we are ideally interested in examining things that have happened over time in the past and we use this information to forecast the future. Put simply, time series data is data that has been collected over time on one or more variables. This data could be annual, monthly, daily, quarterly, etc. Economists have used time series data for forecasting economic growth of an economy and then we use this information to change interest rates or uh, increase taxes or decrease taxes, recommend public policy changes, etc. Companies would use time series data analysis for projecting sales or growth of their company. Uh, time series analysis also has many applications, not just in finance. People use it for weather forecasting as well. So it's not just limited to finance. So in time series data, we br basically break down our series into four different parts, the trend, the cyclical pattern, seasonality and the last one is the irregular term or what we call it as an error term so error term is remaining part of the series which is not explained by trend cyclical or seasonal pattern now what is a trend well a trend would exist when the data would increase or decrease in a particular direction a seasonal pattern would exist when a time series is influenced by seasonal factors such as summer months months of summer or months of fall winter etc Cyclical patterns would exist when the data exhibit rise and fall that are not fixed. So now let us look at a set of some plots that I've created and see how we can identify these patterns in our data set. So the first example is of new one home sales, one family home sales. We have a data from 1975 to 2017. Uh, we see a strong seasonality because every year we would see a spike at a particular few months. This is basically during the summer months, people would buy, buy more homes. The, in winter, the sales would drop. We don't see any trend. We do see some cyclical pattern in this data. We don't, however, we don't see uh, much of a trend in this data set. So we also see that during the economic crisis, the home sales fell from 120,000 to close to 20,000 units and this was the end of the crisis and then we see a steady increase in our home sales the next data set is a 10-year treasury constant maturity rate and we see that there is a downward sloping trend in the data set we don't see any seasonality which is obvious because it's an interest rate and it does not have a high correlation with seasons However, we do see a little bit of cyclical movement because as the economy goes through different phases, we see the interest rates would sort of respond with these uh, changes in the cyclical patterns. The next plot, we have plotted the change in the S&P 500 index. Note that it's a change and not the actual index. And so the y-axis goes from negative 100 to a positive 100. 
we see sort of a random process. It looks like a random process. There is no trend, there is no seasonality, and there is no cyclical pattern in this data series. Now let us go to our R uh, studio and just work with time series object. Okay, so we first download the necessary library, which is the tidy quant. We get the home sales data and we take a look at what is the class of this object. The class of the object is a table or a data frame. Well, a lot of functions in R would not accept this as an argument and it requires time series object or an XTS object. It's good to know how we can convert our data into a TS object. So to do that, we use the TS function. Uh, the first argument in the TS function is your data set. Note that when you download the data from Fred website, it downloads two columns, date and home sales. And so we only require the second column. And so we are indexing the second column. We have to specify the start date of the series, which we can get from right here. And next we would re require the end of the series. Now note that both these arguments, we can only specify the start uh, and R will automatically figure out the last the date on the last series. One argument that we do require is the frequency, which is equal to 12 because it's a monthly data and we R needs to know whether the data is monthly, quarterly, annual, etc. Uh, viewers should try and download a quarterly data and convert it into a TS object. In that case, your frequency would be 4 and so on and so forth. So let's just quickly create a TS object and we will create a plot for it. Well, this plot is very similar to what I showed you in the PowerPoint slide. On the right side, you will see that it created this time series object for you. And this is sort of needed for a lot of functions in R. One of the functions that can become very handy is the first function. Uh, if you remember, we used the first and the last functions when we introduced the, the quant mode package. And so we can use these functions on our time series object and we can get the first month or maybe the second month. Let's look at the 10th month. Uh, so you can use this for subsetting your data set. The next two important arguments uh, or two important functions are the lag and the difference. So when we perform some time series, we will always make use of these functions, lagging a series or taking the first difference, second difference. So to do that, we use the lag function. The first argument in the lag function is our time series object. Uh, we don't need to specify an index over here. And the second argument is telling you the lag. So we are taking the second lag, so the series will start at the second, will uh, lag the series by two. The difference argument works on the same principle, the time series object. And then we are saying take the lag of the time series by two periods and then take the difference on it. When we run all these two functions together and we create, a, we bind them together, what we see is we'll make it more clearer to the viewers what I'm talking about. So this is our original time series object 293444. Over here it lagged it by two periods. And in the third column, we took the lag and we took the difference on the series. So the first two arguments will be NA. So in summary, we looked at what is time series data, what is the trend, cyclical and seasonal patterns in this data. And we also created a time series object or using the TS function.